Well, good morning, new community. This morning, we're talking about Psalm 118. And here's a fun fact. If you were to uh, take every verse from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible and line it up, Psalm 118 verse 5 would be smack dab in the middle. I don't know if you find that as interesting as I do. Um, I, I have the luxury of doing this via video, so I can't um, hear you booing me or ridiculing me uh, for, for that. But I thought it was interesting. Uh, but in all seriousness, Psalm 118, it is a it is it is a, a, a an awesome, awesome passage. Um, I'm only going to be talking about one verse just for time's sake today. But I want to encourage you to really take some time to read this chapter. If you don't take my word uh, for it. Why don't you take Martin Luther's word for it? He says this, This is my own beloved psalm. Although the entire Psalter and all of Holy Scripture are dear to me as, only, as my only comfort and source of life, I fell in love with this psalm especially. Therefore, I call it my own. When emperors and kings, uh, the wise and the learned, and even the saints could not aid me, this psalm proved a friend and helped me out of many great troubles. As a result, it is dearer to me than all the wealth, honor, and power of the Pope, the Turk, and the Emperor. I would be most unwilling to trade this psalm for all of it. So, would you take a, take a moment and read the psalm? So, I'm going to talk about Psalm 118, verse 24. And I want you to see if you can fill in the blanks. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This verse, I, I've used it so many times in my personal life. I've probably even shared it in this video. I know I've said it at church on Sunday mornings, um, but I was doing some research for this and was surprised of, of a couple of things. You know, this Psalm, although it's not, you know, stated explicitly, a lot of people believe that this Psalm was written by David uh, for different reasons, like the tone of it, the language. Um, even in the book of Ezra, there's an allusion to uh, David writing this Psalm. Um, but they, uh, you know, scholars believe that it was written after David had defeated the Philistines and um, had taken the throne of Israel. And after years, literally years of, of fleeing for his life from Saul, he writes this Psalm and is rejoicing. So as I'm as I as I understand, it's it's not just an ordinary day, what we would consider ordinary. This is a special occasion. So does that let us off the hook? Of course, it does not. It's God, not the uh, author and sustainer of life. Is he not uh, the, the, the one who we serve and love every day? Is is it does the Bible not tell us to rejoice in the Lord always? Hint, yes, it does. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So my point is this. It is noteworthy that the same rejoicing that we can have when our lives are turned right side up, when, when God is literally working miracles, when he's doing things that it took years for us to experience. That same rejoicing is the same rejoicing that we can have when our lives are turned upside down, when we are completely devastated, when we are just depleted. And it's the same rejoicing that we can have on an ordinary, just grind your way through the day, work day, uh, or, or an ordinary day. We can experience that same rejoicing. It's just a matter of perspective because when we rejoice, the Bible says we're rejoicing in the Lord always so it's it's in the lord who is the same yesterday today and forever and so in that context we're, we're even in our, our ordinary days our, our ordinary circumstances that's a great landscape to be able to rejoice as well as tragedy as well as triumph see our days are not just this blank slate this just default um empty bag that you fill with experiences instead it's a treasure chest filled by god for us to explore and to enjoy every day we have the opportunity even in, in tough stuff to rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice rejoice today